three scoping meetings were held in March to help the island community better understand the Marine Corps requirements for a live fire training range complex and the supplemental environmental impact statement process associated with it. The meetings were also a chance for the community to ask questions and make comments. It's very important for those who are interested in this whole process to provide us their input, their comments, their concerns, to make sure that when we go forth and do our entire study, that we're capturing the, the study uh, and the issues in their entirety. Okay. Uh, and that we're not leaving any, uh, any issue, any concern, any subject off the table. It's not our intention to do so, and that's part of what scoping is all about, is to make sure that we capture uh, not just the, re the training requirements, but all the other concerns and, uh, that the uh, general public of Guam has. Captain Cuff says firing ranges are essential to the Marine Corps mission. This is small arms. This is rifle and pistol and hand grenade. It, it's not major uh, uh, big weapon systems here. It's just it's a, a training range complex that we will allow our Marine Corps as well as our National Guard and our other services to be uh, both proficient and current uh, in their uh, military training. Captain Cuff says current estimates of non-DOD properties necessary to site a firing range are very notional at this time. He says the Department of Defense remains committed to net negative, which means the federal government will own less land on Guam at the end of the buildup than it does today. So regardless of where we uh, size, uh, where we put the, the range and the size and orientation of the, of the ranges, the DOD intent is still to have a smaller footprint after the entire buildup is done. The island community is encouraged to voice their comments during the scoping period, which continues through April 6th. For Joint Military News Network, I'm Catherine Cruz Norton.